What's up everyone, how's it going? This is Waj. Hope you guys are all doing well. And as you all know, I'm a huge fan of budget-based gaming PCs. A couple of months back earlier this year, AMD actually launched the new Excavator series of desktop GPUs. And one of those processors that seems really compelling, especially under the $70 price point, is the new AMD Athlon X4 845. Now this is a quad-core chip that's clocked in around 3.5 to 3.8 gigahertz. It's a 65 watt processor, so it's very power efficient and they've also revamped the cooler that comes with these lower end AMD CPUs which will give you a better overall thermal dynamics. Now what's interesting about this CPU it's actually designed for people that are going to install their own discrete graphics card. There's no built-in integrated graphics which is going to be especially awesome if you want to get perhaps a budget based GPU and pair it up with this processor and do some pretty decent high frame rate gaming at full HD resolution. Now we've paired this processor Processor with the uh, Gigabyte F2A88X motherboard, which is going to give you tons of options in terms of GPU connectivity, lots of different data port connections such as USB 3.1 as well as USB 3.0, SATA 3 connections, and support for up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now, what's important to know about the 845 is that it doesn't actually support 16x PCI Express 3.0 bandwidth. It actually is limited to 8x at 3.0, which is equivalent to 16x at PCI. PCI Express 2.0. So you probably don't want to get anything better than a GTX 960 or a 380X in order to uh, mitigate the CPU bottleneck effect. Now for those of you guys that are in the market for a budget-based AMD CPU, you're probably wondering what the difference between the 845 is compared to the Athlon X4 860K, which is also a quad-core processor. Now the key thing is this is actually a slightly cheaper uh, based on a certain pricing. You can pay any between 20 to 15 dollars more for the 860k and in a lot of ways if you're not going to deal with any overclocking the 845 actually performs a little bit better it's definitely more power efficient and has better thermal dynamics it also comes with a larger uh, more efficient heat sink which if you take a look at this uh, chart over here in terms of idle and load temperatures the 845 is significantly cooler than the 860 on a maximum 100 percent a load and on top of that if you take a look at our cinebench r15 benchmark you're going to notice that uh, based on stock frequencies, non-overclock settings, the stock configuration on the 845 is faster than the 860K, both when it comes to multi-threaded and single-threaded performance. That being said, if you do decide to overclock your chips, the 860K has a little bit more of an edge uh, that way. It seems to be a little bit more stable and it can handle uh, higher voltages at higher clock speeds uh, than the 845 based on our sample that we have over here. And the Cinebench scores for the overclock clock uh, settings uh, seem to yield a better performance results on the 860k side. Furthermore, when it comes to gaming performance, uh, the 860k is just slightly faster. Uh, again, if you do decide to overclock both uh, systems, if you don't decide to overclock, uh, the 845 will be faster. But as you can see on Firestrike, uh, we're getting marginally very, very similar results, but you are uh, finding a little bit of a performance edge on the 860k side, but nothing that is uh, noticeable to the eye. Uh, furthermore, if you take a look at our Grand Theft Auto 5 synthetic benchmark, you're also getting one to two FPS higher scores on the overclock version of an 860K compared to an overclock version of an 845. But as we mentioned before, when it comes to power efficiency, certainly the new architecture consumes uh, significantly less power, uh, both when it comes to the idle power consumption and the full gaming load playing Grand Theft Auto 5. Even though the 860K was pretty power efficient, looks like the 845 just edges up that performance at another level, which is definitely impressive to see, especially if you want to make a compact, power-efficient, quiet system. But really, on that, guys, that's really it. Hopefully, this video helped you out in some way. If you're in the market for a ultra low budget a gaming PC, I would definitely recommend checking out the 845 or the 860K. In uh, both instances, I think you're going to be pretty happy. You can just save uh, twenty to fifteen dollars by going with the 845 and pretty much have the same overall gaming performance. Check out uh, the links in the description for more detailed information about everything we talked about. Big thank you to AMD for helping us create. Uh, content like this without them this wouldn't be possible and really other than that thanks for your support thanks for watching and we'll see you later take care